This is the third section of chapter five, the traveling salesman problem. And here we're going to be looking at using a minimum spanning tree method to find a lower bound. So the following is what we're going to use to find a lower bound using a spanning tree method. OK, so the first thing that we do is we're going to remove a vertex from our network. Then we're going to find what's called a residual minimum spanning tree, shortened to RMST. Now, what's this? This is the spanning tree of the remaining vertices. So we remove the vertex from the network plus the edges um, associated with that vertex. The network that's left, we will find the minimum spanning tree of that, the RMST. Then what we do, we add back the remove vertex that we removed up here by using the two shortest arcs. So the two shortest arcs that are connected to the vertex that were removed, we add it back in to the um, our minimum spanning tree, our RMST. Now the weight of this network is going to be the, the weight of the RMST plus these two shortest arcs that we've added back in from this removed vertex. Now, just a few notes down here. These steps can be repeated by re removing different vertices. So um, maybe on a computer, what we'd do is say, right, OK, remove vertex A, run through this algorithm, re remove vertex B and so on. And then we're going to get different solutions. And then what we do is we pick the solution with the highest weight, the highest weight, because we want this lower bound to sort of be close to the upper bound. So that sort of restricts the range of values where we're going to be getting a solution. Now, in practice, if you're doing this manually, you're not going to uh, be arcs to remove lots of different vertices. That's going to take ages to do. Uh, a question uh, will probably tell you which vertex to remove, and then you're going to get a solution. Now, um, if our solution is a Hamiltonian cycle, so in other words, it um, it, it goes to every vertex and it starts and finishes in the same place or our upper bound is equal to our lower bound then we have found an optimal solution the table of least distances for a network is shown by deleting vertex a find a lower bound for the traveling salesman problem for this network so let's delete vertex a from our distances table here or least distances table so that's gone and we will delete that as well there now we will start then at the next vertex we'll start at vertex b and we're going to be using prim's algorithm so i'll just put here Start a better be using Prim's algorithm. So, what that is going to mean um, is if I start a vertex bit stable as one, that means crossing out row B, looking in column B for the lowest weight, which is B, and that's D. So, I'll cross out D, D a label as two. I want to find the lowest weight in either column B or D, that's 14. So I'll cross out that row, label E as 3. I'm looking for the lowest weight in either of these three columns. Because we've just got this row, it's looking for the lowest weight in any of these rows, in, in that row. And that's going to be the 18. So that one is 4. So now I'll draw what that looks like. OK, so I'll put the letters and that on in a moment. Now, it's helpful when we do these problems to draw the minimum spanning tree as a straight line. And then we can add in the deleted vertex in a moment. So we started at B. Then we went to D, then E and C finally. And the weights were B to D was 8, D to E was 14 and e to c was 18. So let's just write down that the weight 
of our residual minimum spanning tree is 8 plus 14 plus 18 and that's 40. Now I'm going to get um, vertex A back because I want to add vertex A back in. So maybe if I just draw this and label it as A and I want to add it back into this using the two vertices of lowest weight. Now they are these two, A to B and A to C, 11 and 13. So they're the shortest. So I'm going to draw join A to B and that will be a weight of 11. And then also join A to C, which is going to be a weight of 13. So we'll just put that in here and we'll put in the 13. So the lower bound is going to be the weight of this minimum spanning tree, the 40, plus the two um, edges I've added back in, the arcs I've added back in 11 and 13. So a lower bound is going to be 40, which we've just worked out from before, um, plus 11, plus 13, and that gives us a weight of 64 for our uh, lower bound. And uh, part B asks us to state whether this lower bound represents an optimal solution. Well, it does because it's a Hamiltonian cycle. It visits every vertex and we get back to where we start. Okay, so um, since our solution is a Hamiltonian cycle, that means it must be an optimal solution. Um, this represents an optimal solution. So we need to make sure that we uh, mention the phrase Hamiltonian cycle. Okay, by deleting vertices A and then G, find two lower bounds for the traveling salesman problem for the network above. So A first, then G to find two lower bounds. Okay, so this is going to be using Prim's algorithm. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove A. So we'll just get rid of the row and column for A and uh, then we'll just start at B. So starting at B using Prim's algorithm. Okay, so B is going to get labeled as one. Uh, we cross out row B here. We look for the lowest weight in this column here. Now it looks like one, two, one. So that means we're going to C next. So we'll cross out C here. Label this as number two. We'll look for the lowest weight in these two columns here. Now it looks like it's the one, six, five down here. Uh, no, actually it's one, five, five. That's the lowest value. We need to be careful to get the right one. So one, five, five, which means E is next. Cross out E. Let's look for the lowest weight in these three columns, A, sorry, B, C, or E. Now that looks like it's the one, three, one down here. So one, three, one. So that's H that we cross out. And so we're going to H4. Let's find the lowest way. Oh, I definitely think that's the 70 there. Can't see anything smaller than 70. So 70 means F is fifth. So we cross out this row. Then look for the lowest weights in those columns. Now I think that's the one, four, four. Can't see anything smaller than that in any of these columns. So 144 means G is next, so that's number six. Watch that out. 
then look for the lowest weight. So basically look for the lowest weight now in this row here, and that's going to be the 155. Yeah. So that's the last one. And now our algorithm is finished. Okay, now what we're going to do is to draw out um, this residual uh, minimum spanning tree. And as I said, it's helpful to draw it as a straight line. So if I were to draw vertex B first, I can see that I need E and um, C either side of it. So I'll put those in. So we'll label it as we go along. So B, um, C, and E. Now E isn't connected to any other vertex. Sorry, C isn't connected to any other vertex. So it makes sense to keep C over here and extend it over this way. Okay, so what's E connected to? So column E tells me that it goes to H next. So I'll put H here. So after H, in column H, that's connected to F. So I'll put F there. We'll fill it all in the other bits in a minute. And column F is connected to G. And then G is connected to D. And D is at the end, it's not connected to anything. So uh, D there. So we can join all of those up like this. So as I said, if we draw them all as a straight line, it just makes the next part a little bit easier. So we'll include the weights as well. So 1, 2, 1, B to E, 1.5, E to H, 1.31, H to F, 70. F to G144 and G to D155. Okay, so now we're going to add in uh, vertex A. So that's going to get added back in. And we're going to add it back in using the two edges of the lowest weight. So let's just clear these off so we can see. So the two lowest weights are B and C, uh, 47 and 84. So one here, one here, and we have 47 and 84. So let's write, first of all, the weight of our residual minimum spanning tree. So that will be the sum of 121, 155, 131, 70, 144, 155. And that is 766. 776, sorry, and these are miles. Then we're going to write down the weight of these, what we call the two least arcs from A. So the two least arcs from A, or you could say the edges with the least weight from A, um, and those are going to be um, 47 plus 84. So let's sort that out. 47 plus 84, which is 131. So our lower bound is going to be 776 plus 131 giving us 776 plus 131, 907, so 907 miles. So this is what we get when we remove edge A. We now need to do the same thing and remove edge G, or oh, sorry, remove vertex G. Okay, so there's vertex G removed, and we're going to start at vertex A, now, rather than go through the whole working, I'm just going to show the completed uh, Prim's algorithm on this least uh, distance table. So here's our completed 
um, table after the algorithm. Now I'm going to draw the RMST from this. So there's um, our minimum spanning tree, residual minimum spanning tree drawn as straight as possible. We want to know the weight of this. So if we do 84 plus 47 plus 120 plus 131 plus 70 plus 220, we're going to get a weight of 672 miles. Now what we want to do now is to add back in um, the removed um, vertex, which was G. So let's just clear all of this here so we can have a good look at G. So what we want to do in column G is to find the two lowest weights in that column. And that looks like the 144 and the 155. So we'll just highlight those. So these are the two edges we're going to add in. So we'll just put in G down here. Here all this G. So we're adding in G to D. And we're also adding in G to F. So I'm adding in these two. G to D, G to F. Now G to D is 155. And G to um, it should be down here, 155. And then G to F is the 144. So the least weight of removed vertex G is going to be the 144 plus 155, which is 299, 299 miles. So our lower bound is going to be 672 plus 299. Now, what does that give us? 971 miles, 971 miles. OK, part B asks us to select the better lower bound of the two found in part A, given a reason for your answer. Right, so we want to select the highest lower bound because we want the gap, the interval, between the upper and the lower bound to be as small as possible. Okay, so um, the better lower bound is going to be that 971 miles, and you need to give a reason, uh, since we want the uh, solution interval to be as small as possible. So we want it as close as we can get it to the upper bound. Now we could add actually the word here, optimal. We want the optimal solution interval to be as small as possible. And lastly, part C, taking your answer to part B, OK, which was 971 and using a better upper bound of 1,237 miles found in example six, write down the smallest interval that must contain the optimal route. Now, it says write down the smallest interval. So we need to use um, inequality notation. So our basically optimal solution is going to lie between two values, an upper bound and a lower bound. So a lower bound of 971 and an upper bound of 1,237. Now we know that optimal solution needs to be less than uh, the upper bound. It could actually be equal to that. But in terms of our lower bound, is 971 an optimal solution? 
Could I put greater than or equal to 971? Well, 971 would only be an optimal solution if this were a Hamiltonian cycle and it's not. So we get rid of that extra line. So it's really important we get the right symbols here. So this will always be less than or equal to, but this one will only be less than or equal to, so it'll only be this if we have a Hamiltonian cycle, only that if we have found a Hamiltonian cycle, cycle. You should now be able to do exercise 5C on pages 117 to 118. Just a quick recap. Um, when you draw your residual um, minimum spanning tree, draw them in straight lines. This just makes adding in the remove vertex easier. Uh, make your optimal solution interval as small as possible. That means making your lower bound um, as high as possible. So just put that lower bound uh, highest from the removed vertices. Remember you will, you will remove different vertices and work out what a lower bound is. We want to pick the highest of those. And only use this symbol in the optimal solution interval if you have found an, a Hamiltonian cycle. Otherwise, just use the greater than or yeah the greater than symbol yet yeah, when read that way it's going to be greater than